Working in a greenhouse can be a rewarding and interesting occupation. The dangers of greenhouse work are minimized when employers and employees focus on maintaining a safe working environment. The Federal Worker Protection Standard, WPS, was adopted in 1992 to ensure that employees who work in agricultural settings where agricultural pesticides are used are given training on their legal rights and responsibilities and how to best protect themselves. We are going to follow Polly, a new greenhouse worker, as she completes a successful interview. She then receives a greenhouse orientation and worker protection standard training for her new job. Polly, I'm impressed with your application and references. You have a history of being a reliable and dependable worker. Uh, I know that greenhouse work is a bit different from, than what you have been doing, but I know that it can be a real asset to our operation. I'm offering you the position. Are you interested in accepting it? Yes, I am. That's great. I'm really excited to be working here, Mr. Fisher. Do you have any questions about the job? Yes, I have a couple of questions. When's my first day of work? Well, I'd like you to start Monday at 8 a.m. Monday would be fine. And what kind of clothes should I wear to work? I imagine it's nice and warm in the greenhouses. You need to wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, uh, socks, and closed-toed shoes. Oh, why's that? Well, you know, we do use pesticides here in the greenhouses to manage pest populations. And the best way to protect yourself from pesticide residue is to cover as much skin as possible. You will be receiving WPS training to teach you other ways to protect yourself from pesticide exposure. Why do you use pesticides here? Why don't you just grow the crops organically? Well, we do produce some organic crops here, but the word organic does not mean producing a crop without the use of pesticides. Organic production does allow for the use of some specifically certified organic pesticides that must be registered uh, for use in the state in which they are applied. Oh, I didn't know that. Are there any other ways to reduce the use of pesticides in the greenhouses? There are, and you'll learn about these during your orientation and training. But I can assure you that this is a very safe place to work as long as we all follow all the rules. So come to my office Monday morning and I'll give you a tour and introduce you to the other people who work here. Okay, thanks Mr. Fisher. I'll see you Monday. On Monday morning, Polly begins her first day of work. She meets Mr. Fisher at his office for a tour of the facilities. Let's start your tour by assigning you a spot for your personal items. We have employee lockers here at our facility and this one will be yours. You should keep all your personal items, your extra clothing, food, and tobacco products here in your locker or in another pesticide free location. I have plenty of room in my pockets for a couple of snacks. You should still keep them here in your locker because this area is free from pesticide exposure. Snacks and other personal items might absorb pesticide residues if you keep them with you while you're in the greenhouses. The Central Location Safety Board is an important information requirement for every greenhouse operation. It is the next stop on the tour. This is the WPS central information location for our greenhouse operation. You should become familiar with the information that is displayed here. It is in a central location and there are federal rules that guarantee your access to this information. First, I'll show you the safety poster. It summarizes much of the general information that you will be learning during your training. It includes the name, telephone number, and the address of the nearest medical facility. How do I find out what the spray schedule is? You can find that information over here. We notify everyone before we apply pesticides, and we also post the records of all the applications for the last 30 days. That information includes the location and the description of the area to be treated, the product name, the EPA registration number, and the active ingredients of the pesticide, the time and date the pesticide is to be applied and the restricted entry interval, the REI, for the pesticide. Do you have any questions? Can you tell me what REI is? The restricted entry interval, or REI, is the time immediately following a pesticide application when entry into the uh, treated area is restricted. The REI is listed on the pesticide label. You'll learn more about that later. Let's walk over to the pesticide storage area and I'll show you where our pesticides are kept. 
On their way to the pesticide storage area, Mr. Fisher and Polly come to a greenhouse with a sign on the door. Let's stop here. This gives me an opportunity to show you how we post an area when it's been recently sprayed. The sign is in both English and Spanish. Yes, several of our workers have Spanish as a first language. What else do you notice about the sign? Well, the area was sprayed today and it's not safe to enter until 7 o'clock this evening. Good. The sign will be removed once the area has expired. Also, notice the size of the sign. It's 14 inches by 16 inches, and that's the usual size of signs we use. We may use a smaller sign if the area that's treated is too small to accommodate the 14 by 16 inch sign. For example, if we used it to apply pesticides to a small potted plant, we would use a smaller sign for that. Well, here we are at the pesticide storage area. Here's another sign for you to notice. We keep our pesticides locked up in here because we don't want anyone to be accidentally exposed to them. Since you are classified as a worker, you will not be asked to help in the mixing, loading, or applying of any pesticides. Which employees do those jobs? Well, we have licensed pesticide applicators who receive training, take an exam, and are licensed by the state to apply pesticides. We also have a category of employees called handlers who receive specialized training to assist with applying pesticides. Well, what if my supervisor asks for my help with the application of a pesticide? Well, it's against the law for them to ask you to help. But what if they threaten to fire me or reprimand me or... Well, if, if that were to happen, it would be called retaliation. And federal law protects you from being punished for refusing to help apply a pesticide for which you haven't been trained. Yeah, but what if they... Well, if any of those situations happen, just inform me and I'll take care of them, okay? Okay. This also serves as our loading and mixing area. We have water, soap, and paper towels. The pesticide applicators need to be especially careful because they're dealing with concentrated pesticides that haven't been diluted yet down into sprays. That reminds me to warn you of three more things. Never attempt to clean up a pesticide spill. Never take pesticides or empty pesticide containers home with you. And never stay in an area that is close to an area being sprayed because pesticides might drift on you. If you ever have a problem with pesticide contamination, we have a decontamination site for all employees where there is enough water for routine and emergency whole body washing and for eye flushing, plenty of soap and single use towels and a clean coverall and we have an emergency eye wash right around the corner. There are a lot of things I need to remember. Yes, you need to know the law so that you can protect yourself. But let me assure you that, that this is a very safe place to work and accidents seldom happen. Now I'd like to show you some of the other areas where you will be working. These are some really bright lights. They are called HID lights and HID stands for High Intensity Discharge. We have different types and styles of HID lights in the greenhouses. And we can grow plants in the darkest days of winter under these lights. However, I need to warn you about one danger. Notice that the worker who is watering the plants is keeping the water pointed down as she waters. Those bulbs get really hot. And if water hits them, they could explode. Wow. We once had a fire when a bulb exploded ball of fire fell down and ignited some dry plant material. Not only was there the fire, but there was little pieces of glass everywhere. I'll be careful when I water. In this house, Robert is pruning back some plants. Notice how careful he is to put everything in the garbage can. Remember when you asked me about ways to reduce the use of pesticides? Yes. Even though as a worker you are not allowed to help with pesticide applications, there are still some things that you can do to reduce the use of pesticides. How's that? It relates to sanitation. Plant material and used soil can contain mites or mite eggs, insects or insect eggs or other life stages, uh, fungal and bacterial spores that can spread to other plants if they remained in the house. Also debris on the floor could plug the floor drains and create safety hazards for workers. Algae can grow in standing water and make the floor slick. When Robert and Anna are done cleaning up, they will remove the garbage in the can from the building area. That's easy. I can do that. And notice that that hose over there is coiled up. When hoses are spread out on the floor, they become tripping hazards. 
Anything else? When you meet with the lead pesticide applicator, he is going to show you the main pests that we deal with here in these greenhouses. It's important that you keep your eyes open and alert the people who monitor for pests, just in case they missed anything. It's easier to control the beginning of an infestation than an epidemic. Before I introduce you to Mark, who is in charge of pesticide applications, I'll let you take a short break. I think there were some cookies back in the break room. That reminds me to tell you that when you have them working in the greenhouses, you should wash your hands and face with soap and water before eating, drinking, chewing gum, smoking, or using the toilet and before going home. You might have residues on your hands and face from working in areas that have been treated with pesticides. That makes sense. I need to make a couple of phone calls and I'll see you in about 10 minutes. After a short break, Polly meets Mr. Fisher at his office and he introduces her to the person in charge of pest management in the greenhouses. She is given an opportunity to learn about greenhouse pests, pesticides, and precautions to take to minimize exposure. Polly, this is Mark. He's in charge of our pest management operations. Polly is our new employee. She's going to be working with Brenda in propagation and transplanting. I'll need you to tell her about our pest management procedures and answer any questions she might have. Hi, Polly. Let's go to my work area. I'll explain what is involved with pest management and show you some of the pests we encounter. So, Polly, do you have any concerns about working in an area where pesticides have been applied? Yes. I'll admit it sounds a little frightening. Well, you should be concerned, but you should not be afraid. What do you think a pesticide is? I think a pesticide is a poison used to kill bugs. Here, I'd like you to read the EPA definition of a pesticide. Okay. A pesticide is any substance or mixture of substances intended for preventing, destroying, repelling, or mitigating any pest. Pests can be insects, mice, and other animals, unwanted plants, weeds, fungi, or microorganisms like bacteria and viruses. Though often misunderstood to refer only to insecticides, the term pesticide also applies to herbicides, fungicides, and various other substances used to control pests. Under United States law, a pesticide is also any substance or mixture of substances intended for use as a plant regulator, defoliant, or desiccant. So if you've ever disinfected anything with bleach, use insect repellent, or put a flea collar on a dog you've probably used as pesticide. That's interesting. It includes a lot of things I haven't really thought about. So what kind of pesticides do you use in the greenhouses? Well, before we start to talk about pesticides, we need to first identify which pests we need to control. At our company, we have trained monitors who scout for pests every week. We plan what our application around what we find. The dangers are too great and the chemicals are too expensive to just apply pesticides every week, whether we have pests or not. And the pests can also develop resistance to the chemicals if they are treated over and over again with the same chemicals. So what kind of pests do you need to control in your greenhouses? Well, let's look at the most common ones. I have some samples that you can look at under the microscope. Have a seat. These are aphids. They often do not have wings and they can produce live young. Now look at these white flies. They lay eggs and the adults fly around when the plant is disturbed. These are thrips. They're quite small, but they still do lots of damage. Hmm. This leaf has mealybugs on it. Ew. The first four you've just seen have been insects. This next sample has mites. They have eight legs and they make webbing. They're usually on the underside of the leaf. It has something white and powdery on it. This is powdery mildew. It's a type of fungus. We have other pests occasionally, but these are the most common ones. Huh. This has been fascinating. I'll keep my eyes open and let you know if I see any of these. Do you have any questions? Some of these pests seem very small. Does it really matter if there are a few of them on the plants? When people buy plants and take them home, they expect them to be free of pests. If they take home a disease or infested plant, the problem could spread. In addition, some pests can transmit plant viruses while they're feeding on other plants. We would have created a potentially damaging problem and they wouldn't buy from us again. I can see now that managing the pest populations is important in a greenhouse. 
So how do you apply the pesticides? We apply pesticides as sprays, drenches, granules, duster powders, and as gases. The product label must not prohibit greenhouse use. Some pesticides are applied to the plants directly and some are applied to the soil around the plants. So how can you tell if a pesticide has been applied to the plants? You cannot often tell by looking. That's why it's important to read and follow signs, keep children out of any area that has been sprayed, listen to the instructions of your supervisor, and read all the information on the central location safety board, and stay out of any area that has been sprayed until after the REI has expired. Mr. Fisher already showed me the central location safety board and explained it to me. Did he show you what you can find on a product label? No, not yet. A label is an important legal document. It is very specific. It's a violation of federal law to use a product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. The label contains a wealth of information on the pesticide. It tells the applicator exactly how to use it and what pesticide it controls. Someday when you have free time, I'd like you to read over a label just to see all the information it covers. But for right now, I want you to look at the box called Agricultural Use Requirements. This is on the label of products covered by the Worker Protection Standard, and it varies with each product. Notice that it mentions the Worker Protection Standard. It also lists the REI. For this particular pesticide, the REI is 12 hours. Finally, it explains the Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, that would be required for a person to enter the treaty greenhouse before the REI had expired. For this pesticide, it would require a long sleeve shirt, long pants, chemical resistant gloves, and shoes plus socks. Entering a greenhouse before the REI has expired is called early entry. It is very limited, and as a worker, you would be required to receive special instruction and personal protective equipment if you were asked to do an early entry task. Do you have any questions? When you listed the ways earlier how pesticides can be applied, you mentioned that they could be applied as gases. I guess I don't really understand what that means. I'm glad you asked about that. Pesticides that are vapors or gases or form vapors or gases during application are called fumigants. Fumigants are highly toxic and are quick acting. They require special precautions because they are potentially very dangerous. Never enter an area that has been fumigated until the sign is removed and the place has been properly ventilated. Any handler helping with fumigation or with ventilating the greenhouse after it has been fumigated is required to stay in constant visual or voice contact with another handler or pesticide applicator who has immediate access to PPE that the labeling requires for application. Fumigation is a job for two pesticide handlers or applicators and is never a job for workers. That sounds really serious. We take every precaution to stay healthy and safe. Let's take a short walk. I just got one more thing to tell you about. This is a fertilizer injector. It puts fertilizer into the irrigation water so that the plants may be watered and fertilized at the same time. That sounds like a good idea. It works well. Some places also add pesticides to the irrigation water. That is called chemigation. Only appropriately trained and equipped pesticide handlers may operate, move, or repair parts of chemigation equipment that may still contain pesticide residues. Just remember, don't drink any water from the hose lines in the greenhouses. Where do I find safe water to drink? Ask your supervisor where you may locate safe drinking water. Okay. This has been quite a morning. Fortunately, it's almost noon. That means it's time for lunch. Mark walks Polly back to Mr. Fisher's office. That was good timing. I want to take Polly to the lunchroom to introduce her to the other folks who work here. Let me go wash up and use the restroom and I'll get my lunch out of my locker. Be right back. Say, Mark, what do you have on the spray schedule for this afternoon? Well, I posted a planned spray for 9 East. Suzanne will be in there at 2 o'clock for an outbreak of aphids. It's good to know. As far as I know, there's nobody planning on being in that section this afternoon. I'm back. Let's go to lunch. OK. Hi, everyone. This is Polly, our new employee. She's going to be working with Brenda in propagation and transplanting. Hello. Hi, Polly. Hi, Polly. Polly, we have a refrigerator here and a microwave for food use only. So if you need to bring something that you need to keep cool or to warm up, you're welcome to use them. I'll come back later and introduce you to Brenda, and she'll show you what you're going to be doing. Polly joins the lunch crowd and enjoys a break from her busy morning. We are going to discover the problems that are created when a worker does not receive WPS training. Well, I'm 
I don't believe we've met. I'm Suzanne. Are you new here? Yes, my name's Jake. My uncle works in the propagation department. He said he'd hire me to transplant these plants. Well, I'm, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave now. I'm scheduled to spray in here. I'm supposed to work in here until five o'clock. Didn't you see the spray notification on the board? What board? Does Mr. Fisher know that you're working here? Who's Mr. Fisher? Mr. Fisher is the greenhouse manager. I see we have some problems here. You obviously haven't had WPS training. Well, I don't need any training. All I need to do is transplant these plants. Worker protection standard training is a requirement for anyone who works in a place that has been sprayed with pesticides within the last 30 days. It's a federal requirement and the training helps to protect you from the dangers of pesticides. I don't see anything dangerous in here. I don't have time to argue with you today because a lot of other important things to do, but let me point out a few things anyway. There are pesticide residues on these leaves whether you can see them or not. It isn't safe to eat or drink inside the greenhouse when you have pesticide residues on your hands and you're going to be wearing these residues when you put your sweatshirt back on and the clothes you're wearing leave a lot of skin exposed. So what do I do now? You need to go find your uncle, meet with Mr. Fisher, and get properly signed up for work. And then arrange to receive your WPS training. I believe there's a WPS class being taught today at 3 o'clock, so if you hustle, you might be able to get there and get it all straightened out. See you. Sorry for being such a problem. It's fine, but next time read the signs. <laughs> At 3 o'clock, the new employees gather for a WPS training session for workers. Find a seat, Jake. Julie will tell you about the worker protection standard, and then you can watch a DVD. By the way, did anyone tell you what clothes you're supposed to wear to work? Tomorrow I'll be wearing a long sleeve shirt, long pants, closed toed shoes, and socks. Good. Good afternoon. Welcome to worker protection standard training. If you understand English, please raise your hand. Thank you. You'll be staying in this room for your training. And I'd like you to meet Claudia, our other trainer. Las personas que solo hablan español, vengan conmigo, por favor. The worker protection standard was developed by the federal government to ensure the safety of those people working in plant agriculture. It contains responsibilities of employers and employees to protect you from the possible dangers of working where pesticides have been used. This training must be provided to you in a language that you understand. We're going to watch a video and then we'll have a short review. After the DVD is over, Julie engages the workers in a discussion. Now, just in case some of you missed something, I'm going to review the main points of pesticide poisoning. It is possible to be harmed by pesticides by getting them on your skin, in your eyes, if you breathe them, or if you swallow them. Workers are hurt most often by getting pesticides on their skin. Let's see if you can name the possible symptoms of pesticide poisoning. Pesticides may cause skin rashes, hurt your nose, eyes, or throat. You could throw up. You might feel sweaty, dizzy, or have a headache. Or you might have muscle pains or cramps. You might drool or have trouble breathing. You might have very small pupils in your eyes. Could other things cause these same symptoms? Yes. That's right. You need to keep these symptoms in mind, but you also might be feeling ill from the flu or from something else. Here's another question. Does everyone have the same reaction to pesticide exposure? No, some people might be more sensitive to pesticides and some people might have an allergic reaction. Good answer. You must have been paying attention. Now here's another question. Suppose pesticides get on you or in you. When would the symptoms show up? They would probably show up right away. They could show up right away or they could show up hours later. I have a question. What are the long-term effects of these pesticides? That's a good question. Pesticides go through extensive testing before they are registered for use. However, it is difficult to predict the long-term effects of pesticide. Delayed effects may be cancer, harm to your kidneys, liver, or nervous system. Another delayed effect may be birth defects if pregnant women are exposed to pesticides. That is why it's very important to minimize exposure. Now suppose you or someone else gets sick while working. What are you going to do? I'm going to tell my supervisor right away. Very good. Your supervisor must arrange for you to get medical help if you think you've been poisoned at work by pesticides. What are the other responsibilities of your supervisor? 
I think the video said that your supervisor had to provide information about the pesticides. That's right. Your supervisor must provide you or your doctor with the name and other information of the pesticide that might have made you sick. One very valuable piece of information is the EPA registration number of the pesticide. That number is very important because the doctor can identify which ingredients are in the pesticide. So what if there's an accident and I get pesticide on me? You should take off the clothing that has the pesticide on it and rinse your skin with water immediately. Then you should wash with soap and water right away. Soap, water, and paper towels are provided for you at the sinks and restrooms in the greenhouses. If I begin to feel sick or if my eyes, skin, or throat hurt? You should go see a doctor right away. Your boss must make sure you are taken to a clinic or a doctor. Now let's consider another serious situation. Suppose that you or someone else swallows a pesticide. What are you going to do? I would get medical help immediately. For most places in the United States, I would recommend calling 911. If you call a poison control center or a doctor, you need to give them the name of the pesticide and the first aid steps from the label. While waiting for help, follow the first aid directions from the label and get to a doctor as soon as possible. What if I'm in the greenhouse and I start to feel sick or dizzy? You should get to fresh air right away if you begin to feel dizzy or have trouble breathing. If you're working with someone who gets sick from inhaling pesticides, you should get them to fresh air right away. When you get the person outside, loosen their clothing. What else should I do? You should find a first aid trained person immediately. They'll check airways, breathing, and circulation, and proceed from there. Get medical help right away. Who are the people that are trained in first aid? That's a good question. I'm sure Mr. Fisher has a current list. I'll ask him about it and post it on the central location board. Now I have another situation I want to ask you about. Suppose you were standing outside of a greenhouse, you look in and you see someone who has passed out. The video said to go get help, but never go in. And why is that? Because whatever affected that person, such as poisonous fumes, could cause you to pass out too. Good. The person who goes in to help must have special training and breathing equipment to rescue the unconscious person. Again, don't take chances. And the final question, what if a pesticide gets in your eyes? I think it said to immediately start rinsing your eyes with water. That's right. Hold your eyes open under a gentle stream of clean, warm water for 15 minutes. Then go see a doctor right away. In all these cases where you suspect pesticide poisoning, get medical help right away. Now I have one more thing I want to warn you about. It's not related to pesticide, but it can still be a very serious health problem. Heat-related illness, or heat stress, can occur when you work strenuously under very warm conditions. Your body may heat up and not be able to regulate its own temperature. What are the symptoms of heat stress? There are several symptoms, and most are similar to the symptoms of pesticide poisoning. You may feel weak, tired, have a headache, be dizzy, or have blurred vision. You may have difficulty breathing, sweat heavily, have nausea, or feel confused. What should you do if this happens? You should get help right away. Someone should help you lie down in a cool place, loosen your heavy clothing, cool you down with a wet cloth or a gentle spray, and give you cool fluids. You should see a doctor right away. And please watch your coworkers for these symptoms because they may not know what's wrong with them. Are there ways to avoid heat stress? You can minimize your chances of heat stress by drinking lots of water, doing strenuous tasks in the early morning while it's still cool, and taking rest breaks in a cooler part of the greenhouse. Now does anyone have any more questions? Okay, you've been a good group. Just remember you can always check with your supervisor if you have any more questions and check the central location safety board frequently so that you know what areas are going to be treated with pesticide. At the end of her first day of work, Polly stops for a minute to talk to Mr. Fisher before she leaves the greenhouses. Well, how was your first day of work here? Brenda spent some time with me and I think I have a good idea of what I'm doing the rest of the week. Was the WPS training session helpful? Yeah, it was fine. I have a pretty good idea of what to do to develop safe working habits and what to do if there's an accident involving pesticides. By the way, did anyone tell you what to do with your dirty work clothes? Yes, the video said that I should take a shower or bathe, wash my hair, and put on clean clothes every day after work. I'll keep my dirty clothes separate from the rest of the laundry and wash them by themselves. Good. You know that old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure it really is true. Oh, I know. Better safe than sorry. I'm glad I'm working in a place where my health and safety are important. Do you have any questions about anything? No, I don't think I have any other questions, but I'll let you know if I do. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> if you have any questions about working safely in the greenhouse, now is the time to ask the person who has been showing you this video.
So go ahead. 